Lidia Grueso began her political journey in her hometown of Buenaventura, Colombia's biggest shipping port. Buenaventura is 95% Afro-Colombian. In the early 70s, the city government threatened to demolish a shanty town and eradicate the people from their homes. Lidia had a different idea. We argued that to displace these people from their community was to take away their livelihood. Here they could fish for their food and use their boats for transportation. This was their way of life. To take it away would be the same as killing them. Lidia won her first confrontation, and that victory was the foundation for what would become PCN, or Process of Black Communities the most influential environmental organization in Colombia. Livia is the engine in the struggle. The community sees her as a person of great abilities. She's an example for youth, and she encourages them to further their education, to be somebody. Livia's bond with the people of the Uramangi River has been as strong as the current of the river itself. Today, up to 200,000 acres of Pacific rainforest are being destroyed each year by industrial gold mining in an area already devastated by heavy logging. The power struggle over the coast resources has resulted in the systematic displacement of more than one million Afro-Colombians. The Pacific Coast region is home to 30% of Colombia's 10.6 million Afro-Colombians. Local peasants have found themselves literally in the line of fire of armed factions who are operating outside the law. Lidia and all the members of the PCN endure these hardships and risk their lives as a testimony to the value that they put on exchanging their plans for a sustainable community. The West Coast of Colombia is, is, is basically in many ways Africa. The African Colombian loves it, and they, they live their own way, and in the process they have remembered their culture. These were lands that belonged to our ancestors, so we had to organize ourselves and recover the lands we had lost. We never dreamed that it could be possible. These people are very far away, they don't have means of communication. And getting into groups, organizing themselves, facilitating the participation of people from very far away communities is the only way of getting their thoughts to be heard. In 1993, Libya and the PCN mobilized their constituency to help formulate and push through Law 70 an historic legislation that granted Afro-Colombians recognition as a distinct ethnicity with cultural and territorial rights on the lands they've populated for hundreds of years. The victory secured more than 5.9 million acres in territorial rights for Colombia's black rural communities. The politicians accepted Law 70, but they had no idea how many rivers there were or how many Afro-Colombians inhabited those regions. The area is one of the most biodiverse in the world. Our daily practices of caring for the river and the land help to maintain that biodiversity. Libya has been very important to our struggle. Previously, there was no awareness about black culture. The work has been to give value to these cultural traits that we had been losing. Now, people feel valued, they feel stronger, they feel capable of demanding their rights. There's a recognition of how these people have a right over their territory and have demonstrated through their traditional usage that there is an alternative way of using natural resources that is sustainable. We, as a black community, share a history and a common vision grounded in the idea that nature is our principal ally. 
We want the liberty to construct a different kind of life, based on nature, so the world can see. That is our dream. For outstanding environmental achievement in South America, the 2004 Golden Environmental Prize is awarded to Livia Grueso, Buenaventura, Colombia.